in this video I'd like to show you this beautiful sea themed succulent arrangement commissioned by a very good friend of ours, Theo, for his mum, Vicky. Please come and join me as we take a look at the different plants I have used to construct this beautiful sea themed succulent arrangement. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. These are the different succulents I'm going to be using for this arrangement. These succulents are all hardy to my area. So we live in a zone 9, considered a zone 9 hardiness zone. And a lot of these plants will be able to survive the frosts that we have here. So first of all, I was commissioned by Theo to make this succulent arrangement for his mom, Vicky. Also, this beautiful figurine will be the main feature of this arrangement because Vicky likes the ocean and she likes the sea. And I just have this thing hanging around gathering dust. And then now I'm going to get to use it for Vicky's arrangement. Well, these are different rocks that Theo's found. Beautiful pieces. That one looks like a leaf or something from, look at that. See, that's fossilized. Uh, bits of leaves and also some copper ore What I like from this lot is this one because it kind of looks like corals, isn't it? This was given to me at my disposal to use for this arrangement. The pot I'm going to be using is this casserole dish. I got this one from a thrift store or op shop here in Australia is what we call it. it. did not come with a hole so I put three holes in it and also it's sort of flat in the bottom so what I like to do is put some feet in the bottom for air circulation. So I'll put one in the center and then I'll put four on different sides. One. So that's good enough. I can turn this over and we can begin so we don't need this lid anymore so i'm going to put this away now as far as the hole of our pot or planter i'm going to use a plasterboard tape or gyprock tape to cover the hole in the bottom so that way our rocks or soil doesn't go through and i'm going to be placing some big pieces of granite in the bottom of this this just allows for better drainage for the soil. Although our soil mix is a fast draining one, I still prefer to put some granite in the bottom. And also now I'm going to put some soil. I'm using my master succulent soil mix for this one. We fill it up right to the top. I forgot to put my Lazy Susan. So this will make it easier for me to work with. Now also, before I top up the soil. I just want to show you the soil is moist but not wet because I don't want the soil to be too dry or too wet for these plants because a lot of them are cuttings and if you have them too wet or I have it too wet then they can rot because this is not going to be watered for the next month and this is summer in Australia right now so I don't want her to worry about watering this until a month later. Most of them doesn't have any roots, so that's why they don't need watering because they need to grow their roots first before they get watered. So I'm just tapping it. Okay, so now we're ready to roll. So first things first, I need this one. So it's just setting it, so I would really like to have it sitting right in the center. That way it can spin around and I can put my plants around. and. This part of this figurine has got all anchors and other starfish and whatever and we're not going to see that because it's going to get covered by the plants so might as well hide it so that way it can better anchor down in the bottom and doesn't flip flop all over the place and now we're just gonna have our little fishy and just trying to see what else in the bottom oh the crab we're gonna be covering the crab doesn't matter <laughs> also i want to incorporate this one so because this is very special so what i need for this rock i need to put some 
something on this one later on so I need to maybe I think I'll move please excuse me I will show you what it looks like at the front but I just need it facing me at the moment so I'm just gonna move this across Is that better so that way I can put this one over here does that look good okay I need to bury it into the soil so it doesn't move there you go now that is set so now we're going to put some plants the first thing I want to put in is this Hawothia because it's nice and tall this will anchor our design so I'm going to put this one at the back I'm going to grab a whole lot of the roots and we're going to sink it in guide it underneath okay that actually looks good and we'll put this zebra one sort of right in the front or maybe on the side here okay so that one there all these plants will actually grow eventually but this arrangement is supposed to last for at least a couple of years so now with what I've got here I want to put first the big ones of course so that's why I'm putting those Haworthiopsis and then now this beautiful Sempervivum. I'm going to grab the bottom roots and we shake it all over. So it'll go down, 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 down into the soil deeper. So normally this Sempervivum, if it's planted in the ground with a lot of soil, this is going to grow quite big. But if planted in a small container like this, they tend to stay small like these other ones here. So this one is actually a smaller variety of this, but this one now we need to put maybe over there or over on the side there. We'll see how I go first. There you go. Does that set it? That's looking beautiful. Now on the opposite side here, I want to put this other one. So these ones would actually sort of mimic as little sea creatures or little sea plant or some sort but anyway <laughs> corals that's what i was looking for corals there you go okay that is starting to look good so it looks like i'm not going to be able to use all these plants so anyway i'm just mainly using the big ones first and also this kalankoe this will grow quite tall so I'm trying to give it a chance to grow at the back here so I'm gonna put this one at the back sort of opposite because this will give it height eventually but having height doesn't mean it's a good thing if you have bare in the bottom so what I like to do I'm gonna put another that one Ionium kiwi is that beautiful so this one now I'm gonna put on that side because this will still grow tall because you can easily cut it down so maybe after having this arrangement for a couple of years I can actually uh, redo it for her but I'm sure this is still going to be fine for the next couple of years so that's already looking good and it's barely got any plants yet uh, also before I do that see that will just contrast it nicely isn't it like look at that so that one there I'm not even sure whether between that one and that one, I think this one. So I want to put it sort of more inside so it look like it's crawling out under uh, the dolphin here. Oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. So these are all low maintenance plant, by the way. See, that looks like an octopus trying to come out of it. Now, on this side now, I'm going to put another one of these at the back here. There you go. Now, do I have another one? Yep, another one. So, different points. So, a one, a two, and a three. So, maybe somewhere in there. Is that good? Wait a minute. Okay, we'll put you under... Okay, the Ionium Kiwi. So what happens now when the Sempervivum does grow, they will fill up this area. So if the Ionium grows tall, the bottom part of this will be filled up by the 
Semper Vivum because it will just grow, cluster up underneath that. So I don't want to put any plants that sort of grow and sort of gangly or sort of overhangs. Although I will put a couple of plants that sort of overhang like the sedum here but at the moment I'll just see where uh where what I can uh, also where I can put this one also this one this sedum lucidum will actually grow tall so I'm gonna put this insert this right in the middle here if I could fit it in if it will find a spot there you go it's touching soil that's good enough and also down on the other side here I would really like to put this Violet Queen because again this is a plant that will grow out and she can actually harvest this and put this in the garden so I'm gonna insert this one in the corner here like so and since that is starting to hang on wait a minute there you go starting to pack up okay now what else can I put in here I'm just trying to pick now this one's because this is already uh, so beautiful this Graptopetalum paraguayensi SSP Bernalensi is just gorgeous this is cutting and it's already rooting so maybe I'll try and give her a little bit of everything so instead of putting a cluster of different succulents here I'm just gonna put different ones and also this because it's got height anyway I'm gonna put one of these sedum morganianum put you here and maybe a sedum clavatum would be nice see there you go and the purple delight is just so delightful isn't it you gotta have a purple delight so this one now I'm just actually sort of putting them all in okay maybe put the purple delight at the back here there you go trying to see what else can I put in here I was gonna use the Haworthia but the only problem with the Haworthia look this is one plant one head but look how many babies it's got so if I do plant this in here eventually this will just take over the whole pot and that's why I'm not going to use it. So they're only good for maybe we'll put a small one here. And then if it gets out of hand, she can easily pull it out. But if it does grow, it will be a beautiful addition to this one. So put the Haworthia there. I really like the Kanehini. This one as well, it will grow into a nice compact. And it also mimics some sort of corals so it kind of looks like corals isn't it so that's why we're gonna put this in here and a whole heap of corals i think would be good so now i am actually getting carried away that i forgot to put some rocks so i still have room to put the rocks so i'm gonna put the rocks or my top dressing so we're gonna swap this I just finished putting all the plants that I want to put in it so I didn't get to put everything in it because it's only a small area here but you can see that all the plants has popped out nicely so now there's only a couple of things I need to put in so I would like to put this little fishy over here and also this other one over there just so the fishes can talk to each other and say hello how you doing <laughs> and the other one up the top here will be the same and there you go now our sea theme succulent arrangement is finished